Hi there, and welcome to this video on the applications of annuities. Let's start with the outstanding balance on a loan. The principle here is that the outstanding balance is simply the present value of the payments that are still to be made. The amount borrowed from the bank initially is the present value of all loan payments. The amount borrowed can be described as the outstanding balance at T0. So if we use that logic, the outstanding balance after a certain amount of payments is simply the present value of the payments that are still to be made. So there we can see the outstanding balance is the present value of the remaining payments. For example, Theo takes out a loan of 500,000 Rand over a span of 10 years at an interest rate of 10% per annum compounded monthly. His monthly payments are 6,607 Rand and 54 cents. What is the outstanding balance immediately after the 24th payment? Now, the outstanding balance is simply the present value of the remaining payments. And the remaining payments is the 10 times 12 that he had to pay in total minus the 24 payments he's already made. So there are 96 payments remaining. So we then use our present value formally for the remaining payments. So there we have N, which is going to be equal to 96 because there are 96 payments still remaining and our x our monthly payments remain the same and our i our interest rate also remains the same and we find that the outstanding balance on the loan after the 24th payment is 435446 rand and 72 cents now, let's look at how to calculate the final payment on a loan. So Jerry takes out a loan of 300,000 Rand. He makes monthly payments of 12,000 Rand. Interest is charged at 10% per annum compounded monthly. What amount is his final payment on the loan? Now, there's some steps that we're going to follow in order to find the final payment. First, we're going to solve for the number of payments under the given conditions, which is the interest rate and the monthly payments that he makes. Then we are going to find the outstanding balance at the end of the final complete payment. So how this is going to work is we're going to have a timeline and we're going to have a certain number of payments that are complete. But then after our last complete payment, of say 12,000 Rand, right? There is going to be some money still outstanding that is going to be less than 12,000 Rand. So after that last complete payment, the outstanding balance is less than 12,000 Rand. So how do we find out what the value of that final payment is going to be that is not a full 12,000 Rand. It's going to be some amount less than 5,000 Rand. So what we've got to do is we've got to find the outstanding balance right after that final payment and we've got to grow that outstanding balance by one month that that outstanding amount is going to sit in the account and we then will have the value of the final payment. Let's have a look here. So first we must solve for the total number of payments and for that we're going to use a present value formally. Right, so we've got that 300,000 Rand has to be equal to the present value. He makes payments of 12,000 Rand. The interest rate is 0 0.1 which is 10% but it's compounded monthly. We don't know what N is, that's what we're trying to find. And we know at the bottom we must have the interest rate as well. So then when we put this into our calculator, well, before we put it into our calculator, we'll do a bit of math and you'll end up with an expression that looks something like this. 19 over 24 is equal to one plus 0 0,1 over 12 
to the minus n. Right? And the reason I decided to stop there and continue from there is because at this point we have to use a logarithm in order to solve for n, which is something you might not be all that familiar with. Right? So we know that if you have a to the b is equal to, let's say, x, right? then log a x is equal to b. So if we apply that here, right, we get that negative n is equal to log 1 plus 0, 0,1 over 12. So that's the base there. And then what it used to be equal to, 19 over 24, right? And from that, we then get that n is equal to 28 comma 1504, right? So what that means is that there are 28 complete payments of 12,000 Rand, right? So at T27, T28, we made payments of 12,000 Rand, but then after the 28th payment, right, there was less than 12,000 Rand left outstanding on that loan. So we now have to find out what the outstanding balance was so that we can make that payment at t29. Okay, so now we simply have to find the outstanding balance after the 28th payment, right? So how do we do that? Well, the outstanding balance is always the present value of the payments that we still have to make. So in this instance, we've still got to make 0, 0,1504 4 payments, right? So our interest rate remains the same. But now our n is the payments that remain after we've made 28 payments. So this is negative 0, 0,1504, right? And again, we've just got to put everything into our formula there. And then we find that at the last 28th payment, right, we have 1796.20 left in that account, right? So at T28, the outstanding balance is equal to this 1796.20. But we've got to find out now what do we pay at T29. Now, it's not going to be 1796,20 because there's still a whole month that that 1796,20 is sitting in the account and gaining interest. So we've got to take that outstanding balance at T28 and we've got to grow it. We've got to add interest to it for the one month that it is still in that account, right? So the final payment is going to be equal to this 1796.20 times 1 plus 0, 0,1 over 12. And that's to the power of 1 because it's just for that one month over there. And we find that our final payment is going to be equal to 1811,17. Right. And that's all there is to it in order to calculate the final payment of a loan. Then we can move on to irregular payments. So up until now, everybody's been, I suppose, following the rules nicely. If they were supposed to start paying off their loan at T1, then they start paying off their loan at T1. But sometimes life isn't as simple as that. And sometimes uh, due to unforeseen circumstances, people miss payments on their loans. So how are we going to deal with that? Joran takes out a loan of 400,000 Rand to be repaid over 10 years at an interest rate of 13% per annum compounded monthly. The loan started on January 1st, but due to unforeseen circumstances, she makes her first payment only on the 31st of May 2019. We've got to calculate her monthly payments, right? Now, what we've got to take into account here uh, and remember is that the bank isn't going to give her extra time to pay off her loan just because she started late. She still needs to finish paying off that loan 10 years after she got the amount. So instead of being able to do 
10 times 12 payments, she now has fewer payments in which to pay off the total loan amount. So we've got to first figure out how many payments did she miss, right? And the easiest way to do this is to draw a little timeline. So we know that on the 1st of Jan, she got the loan, right? So that's when the money was paid into her account. Her first payment should have been on the 31st of January, but she missed that payment. Then we go to February, there's March, and then we find there's April after March, right? And then we've got to get to May. Okay, right, so we've got a little timeline there. So we know her first payment was supposed to be on the 31st of January. So how many payments did she miss? She missed one, two, three, four payments, right? So the number of payments she has to make is 10 times 12 minus four, right? But while she was not making those payments, the loan amount didn't remain at 400,000 Rand. The loan was actually still accumulating interest. So we've got to add interest to the outstanding balance of this loan. How much interest? Well, one, two, three, four, right? So the same number of payments that she missed, we've got to put four months of interest onto that loan and we know that our future value or present value annuity, whichever it is, always has the first payment at the end of the period. So if her first payment is on the 31st of May, we've got to have our loan amount at the 30th of April, right? So we know we've got to grow the loan by four months. So the present value that she needs to pay off isn't going to be 400,000 Rand. It's going to be 400,000 Rand times one plus the 13% over 12 to the power of four. And that is going to be 417617,04, right? So that now is in effect the value of the loan that she's paying off, almost as if she just started with a different loan that she got at that period there, and now she just has less time to pay it off. So in our present value formula that we're gonna use for our loan, that is going to be the amount, the 417617,04. So now we know the number of payments is 116, and that 116 was the 10 times 12 minus four, right? That we decided is the number of payments she has to make, and there we've got the present value of the loan four months after she actually took the loan out but wasn't making any payments. Right, so now we've got to just put it into our present value formula. So we've got 417617,04 is equal to, and now we don't know what the payments are, so that's going to be x, right, then 1 minus 1 plus 0, 0,13 over 12, we know that there are 116 payments, right? And we have to put the interest at the bottom there as well, right? And if you put that into your calculator, you find that X is gonna be 6,341 Rand and 11 cents, right? So that is going to be her monthly payments given that she started paying off four months late. So let's summarize everything that we've learned. For the outstanding balance on a loan, all you're going to do is find the present value of all of the payments that are still to be made. In order to find the final payment, you're going to find the outstanding balance after the last full or complete payment, and you're going to grow that outstanding balance by one month in order to find the final payment. And if you have irregular payments, you grow the outstanding balance by the months of payments missed. 
And then you are going to calculate the new monthly payment with the time period reduced by the missed payments. Right, that's all from me. I don't think you're going to get this without much practice in my experience. So make sure that you spend some time practicing these concepts.